Hey everybody, this is a code walkthrough for the code that runs my Raspberry Pi sign. If you've not seen it, you might want to go watch it because otherwise this probably won't make a whole lot of sense. Now a couple of things. This is the first time I've ever programmed anything for the Raspberry Pi. This is the first time I've ever written anything in Python. So while I'm not saying at all that this code is correct or the best way to do it, it does work. So if you're looking to just get started, I just want to walk through the code a little bit so you see what all the lines do, take some of the mystery out of it. I hope it's helpful. To get this thing started, I went through all the setup at um, Adafruit. They have a whole article, tells you everything you need to download, how to do it, every single step. And that will get you to a point to where you can actually run some of their example code. So I started with one of their example files, which is where this all came from. And that gives you a good example of how to draw images. So a lot of this is from there that I just expanded on it. I'm just going to walk through the sections, uh, kind of high level stuff. I'm not going to go through line by line or anything. So this imports all the libraries that are used. Uh, the image and the image draw obviously help you draw images. The time helps you to be able to do uh, timeouts and if you need the script to pause for a certain amount of time, stuff like that. This gives you access to the OS, this gives you access to the matrix, and then this to the GPIO, the input and the output of the Raspberry Pi. Okay. That's all pretty standard. So I just created a variable here to start with, and this tells me where on my Raspberry Pi all my images are stored. It's just the base path. We've got a variable here that is equal to zero, and that's to use later. And then just some basic GPIO setup stuff. Now in this section right here, I'm setting up what the buttons do, or what the GPIO does. Some of them are buttons, some of them are LEDs. And so each one of my arcade buttons has an LED in it. So the button is one IO, one I, and then the LED is an output. So we have an input and an output for each of the four arcade buttons in this section. This top one, number three, is just a button to use for the startup and shutdown of the Pi itself. Some basic setup here for the matrix, tells you how many rows and how many rows and columns you have. Uh, this is all standard stuff. This is where it starts to get kind of custom. Like I said, this may not be the best way to do it, but I'm not a Python programmer. This is the first thing I've ever done in Python. I set up a dictionary uh, called LEDs. And that basically when you call, when you give the dictionary this key, it gives you back this value. And we'll use this later on, but essentially these are the same as these IO pairs up here. Okay, so we're gonna give it the button as the key. It's gonna give us the LED as the value. So this mirrors what's up there. You could probably actually make this even more general by combining those two things. But regardless, it's a way for us to keep track of those relationships between those two numbers. Now we have a function here that is show ready. And this um, sets up some globals that gives us access inside this function to these things that were defined globally. And all this does is turn the lights on and off in sequence to show us visually on the keypad that this thing is ready to run. And so it's looping, it does a while, all this stuff in a while loop, and it does it five times right there. And for each one of the keys in LEDs, this is LEDs, so for each one of these keys, it's gonna loop through, it's gonna get the value from it, and then it's going to set the output of that LED, it's gonna use that number for the LED and turn that LED on. It's gonna wait a very short amount of time and then turn that one off. And it's gonna do that in sequence. So it's gonna run from top to bottom, this one, this one, this one, this one. That way it lights up in sequence, turns one off, turns one on, then turns it off, moves to the next one and does the same. And then it does that whole sequence five times. And that just shows us that the whole thing is on. Now when that's finished doing that little sequence, it's gonna load up an image on screen display it, wait two seconds, and then clear it off. And so that's the whole startup sequence, and that just shows us that it's ready uh, when the code is all ready to run. Now this is the definition of this function right here. It's not actually doing this work yet. I'm just defining what happens when I call show ready. The next one is even simpler. It's called clear lights, and it loops through all the keys in that LEDs dictionary that I talked about and just turns them all off. This is a way for us to clear every light in case we need it. I'm not even sure if I use this function, but it's in there. This is where all the big work is done. Look for buttons. And when you call this, you have to give it a number. 
And so that number is which button it's actually looking for. So we're just gonna imagine that we're only doing this one time. Uh, say we sent it button number 18 for this example. Set up some globals. Then we find the state of the button, the input, on 18. That's what we set it in. So basically we're just checking a button to see if it is pressed or not. This means if it is pressed. Okay, so if it is pressed, we want to clear all the lights out, that function that we described earlier. Um, then we want to say if this one is not already pressed, we'll come back to this in a second. If it's not already pressed, then we want to act like it's a new press and we want to do some stuff. Okay, so if this button has not already been pressed, then we're going to turn on the LED inside that button the same process that we did up before it just looks a little more complex but it's the same thing we're going to the dictionary called LEDs with this key it's going to give us a value back the the uh, value of the LED and then we're going to set the output of that LED to true okay so we've got that and then whatever number button num we sent in here we're going to use that in this dictionary we're going to get 18 as the key it's going to give us back this as the value, which is just gives us the image that we need to display. So we're going to turn on the LED. We're going to get our image name, wait a little bit, load up the image that we got from up here, display it. Then we're going to set this variable pressed that was defined all the way back in the beginning to the number that we sent in here to 18. That way, the next time it comes through here and it checks 18, it's gonna get down to this point and it's gonna say, hey, wait, button number and pressed are the same. So I don't need to do any of this stuff. That happened last time. Instead, I'm gonna clear the display, the matrix, and remove all the images. And the value there is that the active button was repressed and so it acts as an off button. Um, it can turn everything off. So you can, there's no like clear screen button. You just use the individual buttons, press them again, and they turn, uh, they remove their own image from that display. So that's really where all the work does, where all the work happens. Um, we have one more function here that's defined called look for shutdown. And our shutdown button that we defined earlier at the way at the top, um, we just see if it's pressed. And if it is pressed, um, then we we show ready, which means we show that little animation of the buttons, the indicator on the control panel. And then we send a shutdown message to the system and actually shuts down the operating system. So up until this point, we all we've done is define things. We actually haven't done any work. The script hasn't done anything yet. This is where it actually starts doing work. Starts out by clearing the screen. And then it prints this to the terminal, so you know that you're ready to go. Then it does the show ready animation. And then it just does this loop for the rest of the time. It looks for each button individually. So it looks for the 18 button, the 24, the eight, the seven. And if it finds one of those, it goes through this whole process up here, shows the image if it needs to, all that stuff. And then it moves on to the next button. And so it just checks all of them. And then it looks to see if you're pressing the shutdown button at the end. And when it gets to the end here, it just goes back to the top and starts. So basically it's always looking through all the buttons to see if any of them, uh, any of them are being pressed. So that's all there is to this code. I know I went through it pretty quickly, but if you have a little bit of experience with code, you probably get uh, what most of that meant. So this is available on GitHub. If you want to go get it, modify it, scrap it, do whatever you want to with it. It's on there. There'll be a link in the description. Hope that was helpful and uh, see you guys later.